Welcome to another exciting Bible study with Rev. Dr. James A. Duncan, pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church. Faith study in the Word is designed to keep you fired up about your walk with the Lord. Fired up about our faith study in the Word with Pastor Duncan, author, teacher, and long-term educator with a burning desire to see every believer live a full life of faith in the redeeming power of God. This can only happen when we develop a hunger and thirst for studying the Word, God's Word. Thanks for joining us in tonight's study. Praise the Lord, family. So glad to be with you again. Surprise, surprise. We... We're back. We thought we only had three classes, but what happened? We had some technical difficulties, so we just want to go ahead and clean things up. We're going to wrap it up tonight. Amen. I'm so glad to be with you. My name is Pastor Cato Brown. I'm an assistant pastor here at Shallow Baptist Church, where the Honorable Dr. Reverend James Douglas is the senior pastor here, and we appreciate you being with us tonight. Thank you for following us on Facebook, YouTube, all the social medias, uh, Instagram, and everything else. We just appreciate you so much for being here. So tonight, I want to wrap up what we started. We started talking about, Lord, help me make better decisions. The power of choice. Tonight, I want to review a couple of things we talked about last week. You should have the second portion of the class. And now, we're going to talk about the final, which is what we're going to wrap everything up tonight. All right? So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're learning something. Because we don't, we don't intend to waste any time. We just want to get right into it. Amen? All right. So let's look at this. Let's review. The first class, we talked about seven ways to make bad decisions. And remember, making a bad decision doesn't necessarily mean that, it doesn't necessarily mean that you made a bad decision by the, by the choices you made or the consequences of the decision. You make a bad decision when you know something inside you say, don't do it. Don't go in that direction. And you overcome all those senses and decide to say, I'm going to do it anyway. You have to overcome the Holy Spirit who's trying to convince you not to go in a certain direction, you do it anyway. That's when you know you made a bad decision. Amen? But everything says no, and you say yes. Amen? So, we talked about seven ways we make bad decisions. One we talked about is how we, uh, we make a decision too soon, we make a decision too fast, we may make a decision out of fear. Go back to the tape and you'll see seven ways we make bad decisions. Right? Okay. An example of a bad decision we talked about in the second class, where David, who's the king whom God has chosen. Remember, he said he was the giant slayer. He was the one who, uh, who was the, the musician, the psalmist, who loved the Lord, who God said that he followed him, did everything he ever told him to do. He's the apple of God's eyes. But yet, he managed to make several bad decisions. Amen? The consequences of David's decision was his, his whole family was affected by it and his kingdom. He lost three of his sons. Remember the decision he made? The primary decision he made was that he decided not to be on his post. Remember we talked about that? He, uh, he shirked from his responsibility. Anytime you shirk from God's given responsibility, you leave yourself or self open. You leave yourself vulnerable. Because the devil's going to always replace the void that you leave. The, 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 uh, the, the Lord and the enemy hates a vacuum. Anytime you leave a vacuum, leave an opening, he's going to try to fill it with something else. So David's decision was that he stayed home when the king was supposed to go to war. Remember that? And that decision led to the other decisions. He lingered too long in potential danger. He watched that she, remember that she bathed? He watched her. He stared at her. He started thinking about her. My wife's in here, y'all, so you know, she got jokes. Anyway, uh, so he lingered too long. He watched too long. Before you knew it, he was engaging. He was asking questions. He was investigating. He wanted to see more and learn more about it. Before you knew it, he fell into adultery. Once he fell into adultery, he had to try to cover it up. And by covering it up, he ended up having Uriah killed. And by the way, when Uriah was killed, there were other men killed along with Uriah because he sent him to the, heat, the hottest part of the battle just so he could try to cover up his sin. It's a crazy thing you try to cover up a bad decision. You try to cover up your sin. The best thing to do is just repent of it, ask God to forgive you, and move on. But when we try to hold it and try to cover it up, it takes a toll on our body, our psyche, our spirit, because you're trying to hold on to something that God said you have to let go. So David fell because he, one, 
If he just hadn't shirked his responsibility, he would have never been in that situation. Amen? And we said, what was the worst decision ever made? Now, this is the third class. We, we, have, we talked about this the last time. But I want to try to reiterate it and try to bring some kind of closure to this. Amen? We, we've been asking the question, what is the worst decision ever made? So, we discovered that the worst decision ever made was made by Adam and Eve. Remember? They decided that they were not going to listen to God. Let's look at this real quick. The decision was made even though, now remember this, they made this decision, this decision, even though they lived in a pristine environment. Remember, we talked a little bit about that. Life was teeming all around them. They had everything going for them. They could eat from any tree of the garden. There was no restrictions except one. And God said, "You, all this is available to you, even the tree that 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 that, that flow uh, uh, where life flowed from, the, the tree of, of of eternal life. They were able to eat from that, but they chose to do something different. They were free to roam throughout the entire garden. They were able to just have." Their whole environment was working for them. The whole environment was made for them. The whole environment was geared towards them. And yet, even in that environment, they still made the worst decision ever. Adam and Eve had one job. Adam had one job. Keep the garden. Guard it. Take care of it. One job. And fail at doing that one thing by making the worst decision ever. I'm going somewhere, so hang with me, all right? He said, not only did they have uh, one job, they only had one restriction. Think about that. Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, period. One restriction. Now, because of that bad decision, we have to watch what we say, watch what we think, be ye holy, don't touch this, don't go there, because of the one decision they make, we have several restrictions on us. Several. Because sin entered into the world, and now we're fighting against sin, we're fighting against the world, we're fighting against our flesh, and in order to, to be able to successfully overcome these things, we must put boundaries up that tell us, no, you can't do this. Be ye holy as I'm holy. So therefore, if we're going to be holy, we have to remember that I can't do whatever I want. Adam and Eve had one restriction. One. And still made a bad decision. The worst decision ever. They had an uninterrupted relationship with God. Remember? Uninterrupted relationship. They were able to walk with God every single day without having to worry about people calling them, telephone ringing, text messaging, emails, none of that stuff. Going to a job that they didn't care too much for. They had none of these things that were stopping them from having an uninterrupted relationship with God. They were able to walk in the splendor of God, see His face daily, and still make the worst decision ever. <laughs> Blows my mind when I think about it. Uh, they had an uninterrupted relationship with one another. Remember, I told you last week, last time, that uh, they didn't have to worry about Jody Goodbody walking around, you know, uh, Adam looking at her and thinking, wow, maybe her. No, didn't have to worry about that. Uh, uh, Eve didn't have Jack the Ripper trying to get at her because there was just those two. And God, they had an uninterrupted relationship with God and an uninterrupted relationship with one another. And yet, in this environment, with everything they had going on for them, they still made the worst decision ever. And look at this. They had authority, dominion over the cre over God's creation. Remember, God told Adam, name all the creatures, name all the animals, whatever you name them, that's what they're going to be. Remember that? And so, so if he named them, he was also in charge of he had the dominion over them. He even named the very creature he ended up listening to that led him away from God. Think about that. When God gave him the ability to name all the creatures, he had the cognitive ability to be able to see what their character was, was and name them based on their character. And when he saw the serpent, he knew that the serpent was crafty. But even though he had this ability, he had the dominion, he still made the worst decision ever. 
Think about that for a minute because I'm going somewhere. Because if they can make a bad decision in a good environment, how in the world can we make good decisions in a bad environment? We can't make good decisions out the power of God. We can't make good decisions out of God's, God's word, God's spirit. I'm getting ahead of myself. But I need you to see this. If they can make a bad decision in that type of environment, we certainly, can do, we certainly cannot make good decisions without the Spirit of God. Amen? We'll slow it down a little bit. We're a little, a little excited. Amen? All right. So, and they had one voice. One. One voice to follow. Today, we have our flesh. We have the world. We have social media. We have everybody vying for our attention. The devil, the demons, all trying to speak to us. They speak to us in our dreams. They speak to us when we're trying to sleep at night. They speak to us while we're trying to get our work done. We speak to, speak to us while we're trying to have a relationship with, 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 with our family and trying to distract us and redirect us. They had one voice to listen to. One. That was God's. Oh, wait a minute, excuse me. We only have one voice that we really need to listen to. And that's the voice of God. However, because we have so many choices, we often choose the wrong voice as they did. They chose the wrong voice. They have one voice to listen to. That was the voice of God. So chapter, Genesis chapter 3 is where all this, where everything had fell, everything had turned around, everything had happened. First, the question, once you see this. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Jehovah God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall eat not of any tree of the garden. Now notice how he phrased this. He was asking as if he's trying to ascertain from her what did God really say. Did he really say this? Help me to clarify this for me. Now understand, he already knew exactly what God said. He already knew God's purpose. But yet he tried to get her to, to, to start to question, watch this, God's goodness. Maybe he's trying to hold out on something. Maybe he's trying to hide something from you. Maybe he's trying, maybe he's trying to get you or trick you into believing one thing about him when he's doing something else. The enemy is always trying to get you to question the goodness of God. No matter how good God's been to you, no matter how many times God has blessed you, he still wants you to turn around and question his goodness. Look at this. The response, her response. And the woman said unto the serpent, of the fruit of the tree, of the trees of the garden we may eat. Right? But notice something. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, or least ye die. Now notice something here. In chapter 2 of Genesis, God told them the prohibition was, don't eat from the tree. She added, don't touch it. Which suggests to the enemy that she already thought about this and she felt confined and restricted that she couldn't even go near it. God never said that. So now because she gave, watch this, ear to the devil, she started having questions in her spirit, in her heart. The devil decided, okay, I got it. I'm going to take her right to where I want her. Notice what he did. The lie. God is hiding something. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Now, first of all, they didn't even know what death meant. They'd never seen death. Nothing, as I told you, life was teeming all around them. Bustling, bursting all around them. But when he said, thou shalt not surely die, she didn't really know what death meant. The thing is, is this. She did not need to know what death meant. God said, you're going to die if you don't listen. The only thing she needed to know as well as we all we need to know, God said it, we got to follow it. You see, obedience is better than sacrifice. God wants us to obey his word, but we start to question his word when we start to listen to other voices. Y'all better hear me. That's why you got to watch the people you talk to. You got to watch who you share your dreams with. You got to watch who you share your vision with. Because if you share with the wrong people, they will try to distract you and redirect you and cause you to walk away from the very, very blessings of God because you're listening to the wrong voice. You know what I'm saying? The lie. And for God doth know, in the day when ye eat thereof, that your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. Your eyes shall be opened. You're going to see from a different perspective. 
Your eyes shall be open, and you're going to really see who God really is. And then he throws the hook, and you shall be as God. There it is. There it is. That's what our problem is today. We all want to be our own God. That's why decisions that we make oftentimes are contrary to the will of God, because it takes a certain act of humility to obey a God you can't see. It takes a certain act of faith to believe a God who speaks from heaven and speaks within you, but you can't hear him audibly. You've got to take him by his word. Amen. And so now, here it is. You shall be as God. You shall know good from evil. And then the decision that she made. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. She took up the fruit thereof and did eat and she gave also to her husband who was with her and he did eat. Oftentimes when people read this and they want to comment on this, they act like Adam was off somewhere just doing his own thing and happened upon this. No, he was right there the whole time. Adam remained silent. That's one problem we have, brothers. We got to learn how to speak up in a given situation. When we see things going in the wrong direction, we got to speak up. Many times we decide to be quiet, and then the devil's in their house taking over. You better hear what I'm saying. All right? So she saw that it was one to make her wise, good for food, the, the, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. All this was wrapped up in this one decision. The worst decision ever made. Why was, this, why was it the worst decision? I'm glad you asked. The consequences. The consequences of, these, of this decision is what is the reason why it's the worst decision ever made. Look what happened because of this. And I'm going to start picking up a little bit. Just as one man's sin had entered into the world and death through sin and so sin spread through all men. Death and the angel, everybody dies. Everything dies. We were meant to live. God gave him the tree of the, uh, the tree of life in the center of the garden. And he said, you have free access to that. But they chose not to eat from it. Therefore, God must, have want, must want them to live continually. But instead, they chose the, the tree that led them to death. Now, everybody dies. We're all born in sin. all shape in iniquity. And we all have to die. That's heavy, y'all. That's heavy. But don't worry, we're going to get to some good news in a minute. All right? The effects of the fall are numerous and far-reaching. Sin infected, I, know, I use the word intentionally infected, every aspect of our being, it has affected our lives on earth and even our eternal destiny. Sin entered into the world. Now hell, which was made for the devil, now possessed people who could have been with Jesus, who could have been saved if Adam and Eve had never fell. Now understand, I know this was the plan of God all along. Understand, God worked, God took a bad, a bad decision and he flipped it around for our good. However, mankind is now living in a, in, 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 a, in, a, in a state of fallenness because of what Adam and Eve did. Notice what else happened. Due to their decision, man is separated from God. Wow. In Genesis 3, 8, 8 to 10, man tried to hide from God, tried to put on these, tried to hide their sin. But in actuality, that's what we've been doing ever since, trying to hide from God. I don't want God to tell me what to do. I don't want to have to change. I want to do what I want to do. God says, keep living like that. Even folk in church, even people who say they know the Lord, still want to be their own God. And we're suffering the consequences for it. Some of our children are out, out of control because we are trying to live out our lives based on our desire, based on our will, based on our wants. And God says, oh, so you want to be God now. See, I said this, I said this a long time ago. I'm glad the Lord's bringing it back to me. See, if whatever word you create, you must maintain you create the world, you must keep it intact. And if you want it to stay as it is, you must be the one to keep it from spiraling out of control. The problem is that any world that we create is going to fall apart because, again, everything dies. I got to move. Told you, death has entered the human experience, and now everything dies. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. 
Don't worry, we're going to finish up the other half. And due to the decision, we have lost sight of our purpose. We are supposed to be to have eternal, uh, have, have to, oh, excuse me. We are supposed to be here to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. Romans 11, 36. For of Him and through Him and unto Him are all things to Him be the glory forever and ever. We're supposed to be living to bring glory to God and to enjoy Him forever. But because of the decision they made, we all struggle. Even those of us who are saved, we're struggling just to hear the voice of God. Because you have all these other things in the way. Let me move. So due to that decision, sin has been allowed to be the dominant force in the life of every human being, of every human soul. Sin rules, sin reigns, until we submit our lives to Christ. Somebody out there may not be saved listening to me right now. And you may be wondering why your life is spiraling out of control. Have you submitted yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you given your life over to him? If not, the question is why not? Because there is no guarantee on this planet, on this side of heaven, that other than death. And if you leave your out of Jesus Christ, you will not enter into a place that's going to bring you peace, but it's going to be hell forever. I know we didn't talk about that no more, but I have to tell you, i got to speak the truth. Amen? Let me, let me move. No one is right. It's written. There's none, there's none righteous, no not one. There's none that understand it. There's none that seeketh after God. For all have sinned and, and, and fall short of the glory of God. That's the condition mankind is in. Every single one of us. Born in sin. From our mother's womb, we came out having issues. All you got to do is look at a little baby. That little baby will learn how to say no sometime before they learn how to say daddy or mom. You don't have to teach them how to act up, to act bad. All you got to do is let them be themselves. Because we were all born in sin. But praise God he did not let that their decision be the final word. Thank you, Jesus, that he did. He did not let them stay in that state. Matter of fact, if you look at Genesis chapter 3, towards the end, the Lord made a covering for them. They had to be, they had to be a blood sacrifice made so that the sin that they've done would be covered. Thank you, Lord, for covering our sin through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the cross of Christ Jesus. Thank you for the blood of Christ Jesus. Because if it was not for the blood of Christ Jesus, we would have to suffer the, uh, because of the sin that, that was brought into the world, the decision that they made. But thank you, Lord, that the wages of sin is death. But I'm so thankful for the consecrated conjunction. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. That we don't have to die in our sin. Thank you, Lord. All we have to do is make another decision to choose Jesus. Isn't that good? Isn't that good news? Yeah, I'm about to lose myself. I got to calm down. Okay? All right. Yeah, you're messing with me right now. Okay, so look at this. Romans 5, 15. But as the trespass also, so also is the free gift for if by the trespass of a one, the many died. But much more did the grace, the grace, the grace, the grace, the grace of God and the gift of the grace of, of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound unto many. Many died because of the decision that was made through Adam. But Jesus made a different decision. Adam lived through his worst decision. He lived uh, over a hundred years, hundreds of years. But Jesus died once so we might live forever. Isn't that good news? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the final section, we're going into our final section. All right? The Bible offers many principles to aid the process of making decisions that honor God. The following list, the following list is not exhaustive, but it does present many teachings of the scriptures. So I'm going to move just a little bit. All right? Because I know you've seen some of this already. Seven ways we make God, we make good decisions. The first one is that we have to pray. Amen. Write down 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Because the Bible says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. God expects us to pray. One of the reasons why we make so many bad decisions is because we make decisions without talking to God. So the first thing we have to do is learn how to pray. Amen? And that's just simply talking to the Lord. If, any, if we are told to pray in all situations, we should certainly, excuse me, pray in times of decision making. As we pray, we should ask for wisdom. As we pray, we should ask for wisdom. 
James, just write down James 1, 5 to 8. Because it talks about if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. God will give him to them liberally, upbraiding not. Meaning God's not going to hold it back from you because you ask as if you should already know. Just ask God. Amen? So it's James 1 to 8. And the double-minded man, if you come in trying to live in two worlds at the same time, don't expect God to give you anything. Don't say God today and the devil tomorrow. Amen? God today and my way tomorrow. Define the issue. Sit down and think about what you really want from God. Define what you want. Don't just come to God with this haphazard way and just act like he knows no big deal. You're talking to God. So, so define what is it that you really want. Amen. Thank God we can also go, always go back to the videotape too. Okay? Know the truth. Many times we make decisions without knowing the truth. Understand, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all these other areas are not good places to find information. Get Good information by knowing the truth. Study to show yourself approved on the God of work. We need, we need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15. Know the truth. John, uh, John 8.31. Jesus said to, to the disciples. John 8.31 and 8.32. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Or set you free. Truth liberates. Lies confine. Truth liberates. Lies confined. Again, know the truth. The Spirit of Truth talking about the Holy Spirit in John 16, 13. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit lead me. Holy Spirit guide me. Holy Spirit direct me. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Many times we forget the Holy Spirit. Amen? We need to talk to Him. Seek biblical wisdom. Some decisions come easy when they're in harmony with the Word of God. When I know what the Word of God says, I can make better decisions. Amen? In Psalms 119.05, the word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. I'm walking in harmony with the Spirit of God when I'm walking in the Word of God. Alright? When we follow the teaching of God's Word, we, He guides our path and provides knowledge to make us, help us make better decisions or wise decisions. Seek wise counsel. Stop trying to make it, try, stop trying to make decisions on your own. Stop asking mom and them. Stop asking Pookie and them. Stop asking, uh, 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 you know, the knucklehead down the street. They don't have, they, they don't know anything and they haven't done anything to show, demonstrate they have any wisdom. Why do you keep going to them? Proverbs 11, 14. Where there is no guidance, the people fall. But in the abundance of counsels, there is safety. You find safety when you learn to ask other people who are, watch this, praying, seeking God, and want to know the will of God. Because they're trying to go the same place you're going to make sure they're glorifying God. Trust the Lord. Um, number five, trust the Lord. Trust the Lord with your decision. Sometimes you make a decision, we're not sure. But if I pray, if I sought Godly wisdom, if I read the word, and I'm in harmony with the Spirit of God, trust God. Trust God for the decision. Whatever comes, believe that it is God's purpose, God's plan. Amen? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. You all know this one. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Trust God. Amen? You're going to have two more. This is a big one. Admit your mistakes. Every single human being that's trying to accomplish anything has made mistakes. There's no shame in saying, I was wrong. I did it. I thought I had the right decision. I thought I was going the right direction, but I made a mistake. Admit it. Be willing to admit mistakes and adjust accordingly. In most cases, there is no wisdom in continuing down a wrong path after you have, to have discovered that it is wrong. That doesn't make any sense. I'm going down the wrong path and I know it, but I won't change. That's called being hard-headed, stubborn. Amen. In some cases, just straight up disobedient. Be willing to admit. Be willing to admit your mistakes and all failures. Ask God for the grace to change. Amen. And the last one. It's one of the best. It's the best one. Give glory to God. Anytime you successfully make a proper decision, and your and in the decisions you made, you, you remember something that it wasn't you didn't do it by yourself. 
The Holy Spirit directed you, whether He directed you to the people to talk to, He directed you to the things you need to do. You should never try to take glory from, from, from God and give it to yourself. Amen? All glory belongs to God. It wasn't your power, it wasn't your intelligence, it wasn't your beauty, it wasn't how fine you look, it was none of that stuff. It was God. So give glory to God. Amen? So real quick, however, it's God who blesses our efforts and gives strength. A man can receive only what is given from him from heaven. So if you got it, it's because God gave it to you. Amen? And in conclusion, I just wanted to have a quote. And I love this quote. It's by Stephen Covey. He says, I am not a product of my circumstances. I am the product of my, 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 my decisions. As are you. You're the product of your decisions. So in order for us to make better decisions, you've seen the seven ways. So you no longer can sit down and say, I don't know. You do. You've been told. I've been told. Now we have the ability, if we trust what God says, adhere to his word, we can learn to make better decisions. So God bless you. Remember us on YouTube. Remember us on Facebook. Remember us doing the, uh, 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 our social media, Instagram, and everything else. Remember us. And we're going to be praying for you. We love you. And let's throw close out real quick. Amen. Father God in heaven, we thank you so much for all that was said and done. I pray now to find a lodging place in our hearts. May we hide your word in our hearts so we may not sin against you. Father, we thank you and we praise you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.